come and visit Australia, but don't move to or stay in Australia. Good morning. Are you planning to visit Australia or are you planning to stay in Australia? Whatever you are planning, this video is made for you. How to get free ETA, transportation, tourism, money, people, rich, poor, work and much other information. Let's go ahead get it started now let's see where is Australia what it has to offer Australia is a country a big country also a continent and also an island you can get in by plane or by boat especially by plane prepare yourself for the big change day becomes night summer becomes winter the traffic management change Australia is only about 3% populated has a population of about 26 million Sydney about 5 million Melbourne about 5 million Canberra about half million Adelaide about 1.5 million 19% of population concentrated in urban areas majority of Australia is barren hot inhospitable desert that's the main reason why 90% of users live in a strip of land just 50 kilometers from the coastline after world war ii non-british europeans slowly was allowed to immigrate to australia and by the 70s the white australia policy was abolished and today the country has a considerable population who have Asian ancestry being mostly Chinese and Indian the Sydney Opera House is a true symbol of Australia once you are in Australia you are welcome because this country welcomes everyone especially who wants to have a good time and spend money now a day part of Australia beat with rhythm of tourism mass tourists flock to this country brings dollars stay for a while fill up their luggage and leave as they came this country was made for rich people and that from the beginning who have money and want to have a good time staying for one week or for one year or staying forever in the past this money came from natural resources like iron ore coal gold oil and gas the lasting impact of these mining booms is that they attract a lot of people to the country most of them stayed and attract even more migration let's go back in time and see how big cities welcomed tourists
monorail opened in 1988 and closed in 2013 was a single loop in Sydney. There were eight stations. It served major attractions. It was driven in full manual mode. It was to be taken out of service later on due to problem with its doors. It stuck at the platform due to issues with its doors. They wouldn't close following many accidents as well as it ran in the same direction as a railroad line with no stations connecting to anything other than their own network. Rescued passengers said the passengers affected by the heat were treated. In the heart of its cities, there is scarcely a street without some building activity. Modernization. Additions, new tall building, tear into it, knock it down, and build something new and bigger. Always raise, always up, more office space, more office worker. This country is a country for foreigners. You are not alone and the last. Wherever you go, you will meet a foreigner, a foreigner who may have come 100 years ago or a week ago. English is currently the first language, Australian accent. The second language is Chinese and all other Asian languages. People come mainly from Asia hard worker people. Once you are in, you are a foreigner among the other the foreigners. Capital Square. Here for the capital so, theater. no worries mate. You are not the only one if your level of English is low. Most people flee their homeland to start a new life in Australia living with nature in peace and quiet if they can afford it if they can't afford it they can work for it hoping one day to have a decent life at first the country could offer new arrivals wide open spaces far from their crowded homeland but as the number of arrival grew so did the cities and tourism become important to Australia municipalities have therefore made city centers more attractive to residents so that tourists can have more fun, more shopping malls with well-known brands, free transportation making it easier to get around the city. Hotels, motels, for every budget, because you could be rich just for a week or more. As a newcomer, and if you are a wealthy person, 
others work for you and provide all the services you need like accommodation sightseeing entertainment language courses transport public transport all you have to do is enjoy yourself these services are unique in Australia because tourists are precious to Australia you can even arrange these services before you arrive many websites are available language courses for tourists are very popular in Australia you can find a language course that starts as soon as you arrive for a week a month or more wealthy parents send their children to Australia all year round and if you are not rich but want to travel to Australia and stay for a while you can always find a job in tourism you can also do voluntary work there are many opportunities for volunteers in Australia in this respect there are different types of visa for Australia thus you can also come and stay for free and do voluntary work or paid work the best are teaching languages and working in a youth hostel in Australia most people are very nice no one tries to bother anyone after all you are one of them no matter who you are or how long you stay they try to help you wherever you go you can find an officer Australia is a safe country for tourists no one wants to hurt you Doors closing, please stand clear. In major cities like Sydney and Melbourne, Public transport operates 24 hours a day without interruption. Stores are open from early in the morning to late at night. Not to mention the restaurants. Public telephones are available and free. So you can call anyone in Australia for free after all tourists are precious to Australia safety first city centers are safe crowded with short stay tourists but very safe in this respect among Australian cities Canberra comes first and Sydney second most cities are always under construction renewing everything adapting everything modernization to be always the top of the world cities the only thing you may not be used to 
and which probably bothers you is the direction of traffic and how to cross the road because in Australia all vehicles are required to drive on the left hand side of the road not the right so keep to the left when driving and look to the right when crossing the road these rules also apply to trams and trains remember that trams always have priority so please be careful you can also use public transport public transport runs non-stop in Sydney and Melbourne and until late in other cities this is how Australia welcomes tourists you may be wondering how do I pay for public transport the simplest but most expensive way is to use your contactless payment card like Visa which works immediately nationwide N26 with the Google Wallet wireless payment application works well for all payment the cheapest solution is to buy a local card such as Opal for Sydney and Mikey for Melbourne you can buy them in almost any store in airport stores or in city stores such as 7-eleven public transport is expensive but there is a limit to how high you can go Sydney Opal card for all public transport $4 metro and train $10 bus $6.8 ferry $20 airport you receive a $2 discount for every transfer between metro, train, ferry bus or light rail as part of a one journey within 60 minutes from the last top off no more than $18 per Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and no more than nine dollar per friday saturday and sunday and no more than fifty dollar a week <laughs> how can i check the balance of my opal card an opal card reader when you tap on or off at the top up machine validity nine years refundable yes mikey melbourne mikey pass mikey money so is canterbury road
make getting around Melbourne's city centre easier, there is a zone called the Green Zone, where you can use all trams for free of charge. Because as a tourist, you will be spending most of your time shopping, sightseeing and so on. Keep in mind that if you plan to stay only in central Melbourne, you won't even need to buy a Mikey public transport car. The green zone is indicated by the green color at each station. But no worries, all public transport systems have a voice announcement about the green zone. As well as everything else you need to know about your journey. Announces as you are in green zone and you do not need to valid your card. You are leaving green zone. What's the name of the next station? And what's the name of the current station? And even if you don't pay attention to all this and you valid your public transport card, you won't be charged if you are in the green zone. You might also be interested in a vocal guide when you visit downtown Melbourne. There is a green tram that runs around the city centre all day long with vocal guide. This is because tourists are precious to Australia. And now, the best way to visit the city quickly is with a city tour. In Australia, in addition to shopping and language courses, there are guided tours of the city. Some are free, like the green tram in Melbourne's green zone. People are mostly interested in day tour to visit iconic towns such as Sydney Blue Mountain. Sydney Opera House. Sydney Bondi Beach. Melbourne yes. Grampians. I suppose if we all blow really hard, we might be able to puff out some of the cloud from the, the from the view, from the lookouts. Melbourne Great Ocean Road. Sydney's big bus tours provide the perfect introduction to the city. And the best photo opportunities of iconic landmarks from the top deck with walk-out guide, including 
Sydney Bondi Beach. Sydney's Blue Mountain is about 100 km or an hour's train. Use your Opal card and take the Central Station train to Blue Mountain and get off in Katomba Station or buy a bus tour ticket online or offline and here we go. A big cable car that takes you across the valley and into scenic world. Day tours from Melbourne are generally far from the city centre and start early in the morning and finish late on the same day. The Grampian National Park is about 300 km far from Melbourne city centre. If you like to see Kanguru Island, waterfalls, parrots that eat from the palm of your hand. The Grampians eats a landmark not to be missed. The Great Ocean Road is another landmark located 200 km from Melbourne city centre. Now let's see the capital city of Australia, Canberra. ACT stands for Australian Capital Territory. Canberra is four hours by train from Sydney and 14 hours by train from Melbourne. It has a population of around half a million. If you like calm, clean, big spaces, then you like this city, city of administration. Iconic places are the Parliament House.
Lake Burley Griffin. National Zoo Anzac Parrot Botanic Garden Mount Ainsley National Gallery The Village Conro This youth hostel is the most pleasant place for your short stay in Conro Anzac Parade is situated on the main axis between Parliament House and Mount Ainsley. During the First World War, Australia and New Zealand as a British nation joined forces to help the British government in its action around the world. These soldiers were called Anzac. ANZAC stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. Dark side of Australia, the poor people, poor areas. In general, nowadays, when we talk about Australia, we remember the good things, the nice vacation, the beautiful landscapes, the beaches. Australia is a beautiful country with so much to offer and enjoy. But like any other place, it has its dark sides too. Remember this, Australia is the land of Aborigines, the original inhabitants of Australia. Most of them lost their lives and what lives today lives as a refugee in their own country. This land is not connected to other lands. If you want to stay on this earth, you will have to live far from your family. Some inhabitants may feel isolated due to the country's geographical location. It's true that the language is English and some foreigners are happy to speak English but practically you live with other people 
who share nothing with you. Each of them is connected to their own family in their country of origin. They have different lifestyles and you have your own. Apart from the tourists who live at the top of the chain, the others are workers. They live in the background of the city, the dark side of the city. Most of them have a good situation before coming to this land. But once here, they have to start at the bottom again and with people who don't share their past with you. Housing is expensive, rent is expensive, this will eat your life away. Looking at this from distance, it looks like vacations for life, but it isn't. After understanding this condition, if you still choose to settle here, be prepared for high cost of living. Australia is among the top 10 most expensive countries to live in. Australia's population is booming. Right now, a record-breaking number of us call this country home. So, how big is too big? Do you need an authorization? Yes, you need. Depending on from where you are applying for, this authorization can be different. ETA stands for Electronic Travel Authorization. ETA is not a visa. This is important to note. It works in place of a visa for people wanting to visit the Australia via airport. So it doesn't matter who you are, old or young. If you are traveling to Australia, you are gonna need an ETA. The length of a stay is three months and it is most likely going to be enough. So ETA is quicker and cheaper and it's for everyone. I'll give you the address of official website in the description down below. Because there is lot of people online who will offer to fill in an ETA for you and charge you, so be careful. Next thing to know is that ETA is free, do last for one year. And what information are you gonna to need to fill in your ETA. It's asking you things like your name, what you do for living, where you live. And this information can pretty much be found on your passport. There will be a section about where you stay in when you visit the country. If you haven't booked yet, you can feel it, but you will be asked again at airport pass control. Once you get approved, you are more confident and can go ahead and book your stay. So actually, if you just scroll down on this page, it does actually tell you everything you are gonna need and you do have to agree some of them you do have to upload your passport picture and say no to eligibility questions but do not lie on these answers honestly read the questions and answer honestly and finally, you will get an email about your status. 
and a reference number. If granted, you will get an approval PDF form in your email and a link to check everything at any time. So there you go for free ETA. Here I'm going to be taking you through the application process for a free ETA. If you want to go on holiday to Australia to visit your friends uh, or your families, the home page look like this. There is a ton of information for reading. Click menu. Click visas. Click getting a visa. Click explore visa options. Here, click visit and tourism. Here, choose visiting family and friends. Here, choose your country because ETA is not for all countries. How long do you want to stay in Australia? Less than three months. This will be subclass ETA 651. This visa is free and you must apply from outside Australia. Here you create a username and a password to check on your ETA at any time. 